Hi there folks, I have a bit of a special video for you today. 460 years ago, just 10 miles up the road from me, a person was born who was to become the world's greatest playwright. His name was William Shakespeare, the son of a local glover, born around about now. We don't actually know the exact date of his birth. We, we pinpointed as being the 23rd of April, which is why I'm doing this. But we only actually know the date of his baptism, which was the 26th of April. And because the average length of time between birth and baptism was three days, we say it's the 23rd of April, but it could have been earlier, it could have been the 21st, the 20th, it could even have been today for all we know. So here I am celebrating the birthday of William Shakespeare 460 years ago this month. So uh, Tilly has joined in today. <laughs> Hello. I had to do a video on Shakespeare. Shakespeare has been uh, quite an important part of my life all the way through my life. As many of you know, my father was an actor, so he acted in many Shakespeare plays. He was a member of the Royal Shakespeare Company at two different stages in life. Uh, once in the 1970s, when we spent um, nearly a whole year in Stratford-on-Avon, from which I have very, very many happy memories. And then later, the latter part of his life, uh, he was in the Royal Shakespeare Company again. So I grew up in, you know, around theatre, around theatre people, around actors. Shakespeare, of course, was a big part of that. And later on, I, I was an actress myself for a while. I also um, spent two years working as a dresser at the Royal Shakespeare Company in London. So I had the privilege of seeing lots of Shakespeare plays, not just the actual final performances, but some of the rehearsals. And uh, I knew a lot of actors then who are, have since become famous. I'm not mentioning any names. When I later then did my Open University degree, I did one module which was a study of Shakespeare's works. And I have used Shakespeare a little bit in my own novels too. So as you can see, Shakespeare is quite important to me. I love his plays. He was a person who spoke for every person then and now. His plays are timeless because they they speak about human beings, human emotions that are forever green. Uh, they are not that dated. Um, only the language perhaps we could say is dated but also the language is beautiful and when it's done well it is absolutely uh, amazing. So today uh, I thought I would gather together a few books uh, about Shakespeare, by Shakespeare, what well, the plays, some of the plays by Shakespeare and some novels that have Shakespeare as a character. So get yourself a cup of tea, curl up on the sofa and We'll get going. Right, the sun's come out, so um, that jumper was getting a bit warm. <laughs> first of all, Shakespeare was first and foremost a playwright and a poet, of course. So we ought to talk about the plays first, very briefly. My experience, <laughs> my first time playing Shakespeare was at school. Uh, I was at an all-girls school and we did a production of Macbeth. And I played Lord Ross, which I absolutely loved. And although I hadn't wanted to be an actress up to that point, that it was doing that production that made me want to follow in my father's footsteps and become a, uh, an actress, an actor, we say now. I can't find my old uh, copy of Macbeth. I think it fell to pieces. One of my favourite plays is A Midsummer Night's Dream. 
and this is an old copy of mine. I used to buy them for auditions and things, but I was in <laughs> I was in a very fringe fringe production of uh, a play that just took the story of the mechanicals out of the whole play, and uh, I was in an all female production uh, where the mechanicals were women. I think it was meant to be sort of a women's institute. <laughs> And I played Quinn, so you can see all my uh, markings and notes in in there. Uh, it was it, it it wasn't great, but it was fun. It was quite fun to do. And I just for nostalgia's sake, I picked up my dad's old copy of Antony and Cleopatra. Uh, he, as I said, he was in the Royal Shakespeare Company in the seventies, and he was there. Uh, during the what they called the Roman season, where they did all the uh, Shakespeare's Roman plays, so including Antony and Cleopatra, and he played the soothsayer in in Julius Caesar. So happy memories. One of the things I love about Shakespeare is very often where he brings in the natural world into the speeches, and I just thought I would just do this little bit of a speech uh, from Oberon, <clears throat> the King of the Fairies in the Midsummer Night's Dream, which is one of my favourite little passages. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. Isn't that lovely? And I can just imagine uh, Shakespeare in his youth walking around the banks of the Avon, just, you know, up the road here, um, uh, seeing all these flowers and then later on bringing them into his play. It's just such a lovely thought. I also should mention every person should have a complete works of William Shakespeare and this is mine. My brother bought me this uh, on Christmas 1978. <laughs> Lost the dust cover ages ago uh, and I have, it's a wonderful book to use for me for reference, reading through the plays I, I have uh, sometimes done and it's uh, one of those books I always keep just behind me in my bookshelf uh, for reference. I thought I would read to you one of my favourite sonnets. Uh, of course, we know him most for his plays, but the sonnets are uh, lovely, very interesting if you, you know, wanted to do a study of them. But I, I'm just going to read you one of my favourite sonnets. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken, Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. It isn't that just... Uh, a great sonnet, uh, a great statement about the lasting power of true love. I, I just love it. Now, as this channel is mainly about fiction books, uh, novels, I thought it would be quite fun to talk some about some books that 
actually has Shakespeare as a character. And there's quite a lot of them. And this is just a small, uh, I mean, my collection of, of books that involve Shakespeare or Shakespeare's family, uh, etc. It's quite small compared to the wealth of books there are uh, that include Shakespeare as a character. And of course, it's quite fun to do that because there are parts of Shakespeare's life that we don't know very much about. He's actually quite a shadowy character. You know, there are there are years and years where we don't know where he was or what he was doing. So that means that uh, writers can speculate and uh, do all kinds of interesting things with with those years. So I have a few books here which involve sometimes Shakespeare himself and sometimes touch on Shakespeare and his family. So let's just get on with that. And the first book, um, I read this some time ago, and it's called The Quality of Mercy, and it's by Thay Kellerman. Uh, the title of, of this book is taken uh, from, it's a quote from The Merchant of Venice. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. The Quality of Mercy was published in 1989. It's set in 1593. And it's about a Jewish refugee uh, from the Spanish Inquisition. And she is involved in uh, smuggling uh, Jewish compatriots out of Spain. Very, very dangerous business. At some point she meets William Shakespeare, who is also on a mission to revenge the murder of his friend. And they both are on a very dangerous course and become entwined um, in their each different missions and each other and it is very much a thriller. I enjoyed it very much. My best friend bought me this because she thought, well, that's something Ros is going to like. And she was right. Publishers Weekly said the story is brilliantly original and breathtaking in its scope. A spectacular epic, romantic, bawdy, witty and abounding with adventure. It was great. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. So there's one for you. It's a big one. The Quality of Mercy. Uh, I'm just going to quickly mention this book because it references Shakespeare and it's not my favourite. It's The Rose Labyrinth by Titania Hardy. Uh, it, it has two time periods and uh, it's basically about the spy and astrologer from the Elizabeth, uh, Elizabethan times called John Dee. The premise is that John Dee, feeling that the times he lived in uh, would not be accepting of some of his works, hid them, hoping that one day uh, his descendants would be able to bring them to light. And that is why we've got two different time periods, because it's also set in 2003 when um, a man called Will Stafford inherits uh, a key and an ancient script and goes on a journey to discover what it's all about. I bought this because I absolutely loved the premise. It sounded right up my street. It references Shakespeare, which is why I've included it. Uh, I think I have a feeling, I can't remember, I think Shakespeare does come into it at one point very briefly, that there are a lot of literary references to Shakespeare, but I found the book disappointing. I found the characters two-dimensional, the plot a bit silly. So there you go. I don't often talk about books that I didn't like. I just thought I'd mention this one in case you're thinking of picking it up. I don't know why I've kept it really, but I just like the cover. <laughs> it's it's one of those books that I felt really, really should have been very, very good, but is not as good as the title and the premise 
somehow. If you like things like the Da Vinci Code, you might like it, but I didn't like the Da Vinci Code either uh, for similar reasons. So yeah, not one of my favourites, but worth a mention if you want to just give it a go. Now, the uh, next is uh, are <laughs> two books by the same author, and uh, this one is Marta, and this one is Traitor, both by Rory Clements, who wrote a series of books whose main character was John Shakespeare, William Shakespeare's older brother, and uh, in these books, John Shakespeare is basically an investigator. In Martyr is the first of the series. It's set at a time when uh, the threat of Spanish invasion was very, very imminent. And there also is discovered a plot to assassinate Sir Francis Drake. And he investigates this and also uh, there is a murder that happens that he is also investigating. So it takes you into the seedy world of Elizabethan murder plot. Uh, so it's a bit of a thriller. Of course, being William's older brother, Shakespeare does come into it from time to time as a, at that time uh, a young struggling uh, playwright and actor. Um, Traitor is the fourth in the series. I would like to get around to reading the others at some point. And again, it's at a time where England is again under threat from Spain uh, with possible second armada imminent. John Shakespeare is set to look after, again, John D, Dr D, who has, who has an understanding of uh, some secret weapon that will give the English Navy superiority. But he also discovers an attempted murder, a poisoning of the Earl of Derby, where Dr. D is staying. And uh, it goes on from there. Um, he's investigating this. He uncovers treachery at the very heart of the English royal court. I did enjoy these books. I think that I've I've read one criticism about them is that John Shakespeare tends to have rather 21st century views that he brings into his character. Um, I, I get that, but I, I did enjoy them. They're good, you know, historical thrillers. So, you know, they, they're good cracking reads. Um, the uh, Martyr was published in 2009 and Traitor, the fourth one, was published in 2012. And the others in the series, so Martyr was the first and there's Revenger, Prince, then Traitor, The Heretics, The Queen's Man and Holy Spy. So there you go, a good uh, series to get your teeth stuck into there. And I rather like the fact that he brings William Shakespeare in as a kind of minor character that uh, John sort of sees from time to time. His, his young actor, struggling younger brother, who is, is not famous at all at the time. That's, that's quite fun. Now for my last novel involving Shakespeare, is a book by Bernard Cornwall and it's called Fools and Mortals and the title is a paraphrase uh, of a quote from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Lord, what fools these mortals be. Now Bernard Cornwall you probably know is most famous for writing the uh, Sharp series of novels which was also televised as a series but he's written lots of other historical novels and this one in comparison with the last one I talked about, it's again about one of Shakespeare's brothers, but this time it's his younger brother, Richard Shakespeare. And it's at a time where now William is really famous and they are producing plays in London. And Richard is one of the actors in the company. 
trying to get on in in under the shadow of his famous older brother and trying to make ends meet uh and of course there's sibling rivalry and all that kind of thing it's quite uh it's i enjoyed reading it uh, the main premise of the book is uh, the disappearance of a priceless manuscript which he has to go on a mission to try and find and gets him into uh, a dangerous world where his talents as an actor uh, have to be tested. So it's good. I, I read this uh, fairly recently, so I remember it quite well. And uh, it, it deals a lot with uh, productions uh, of Shakespeare. So it's very, very interesting from that point of view. So you get to see the actors before and after production, backstage, and all that kind of life surrounding the theatre. And it's great. I love that. It's great fun, really, really interesting. And of course, he's uh, a very well read and it's a very well researched book. So that I think is a good read. Fools and Mortals, Bernard Cornwall. There are, of course, many more books that involve Shakespeare. One that recently came out, I really, really want to read, I'll get a copy soon, is uh, called Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. And of course, those of you who know a bit about Shakespeare's life will know that he had three children, one boy and two girls, and his boy was called Hamnet. And sadly, uh, uh, tragically, he died at the age of 11, uh, probably from plague, because it was uh, there were bouts of the plague throughout Shakespeare's life, both in London, of course, and in Stratford. And Hamnet has been very, very well received. The story is basically the fictional account of the death of Shakespeare's son and uh, the grief and how it affects the family. Now, talking about books that involve a bit of Shakespeare, I don't often plug my own books and I am only going to talk about this briefly, but if you do, if you are interested in the history of theatre, uh, fiction about theatre and going back to Shakespearean times, then perhaps you might be interested in my own novel, Legacies. It's uh, basically about an out-of-work actress in the 80s. Slightly autobiographical, perhaps, um, in parts. But uh, she receives a legacy of a key and the, her uncle's um, investigations into her family history. And it basically takes her on a journey uh, through her family history and finding out that she was not the only actress in the family. And it turns into a bit of a thriller as well. Uh, so... Uh, I hope you, you might just want to have a go at that. It's either in, you can get it on paperback or on Kindle from Amazon. And uh, you can find uh, a link to my Amazon page in the description below. I'm not going to say any more than that because of, you know, the revelations in the novel. So I don't want to uh, spoil that for you. Incidentally, while I was writing that novel, um, I had to do quite a lot of research on uh, a few characters. In a local uh, second-hand shop, I came across this portrait of Richard Burbage, who was Shakespeare's friend, colleague, business partner, and of course, one of the main actors in Shakespeare's plays. He was the first person to play many of the parts, including Richard III, Hamlet, etc. And uh, I was so glad when I found this portrait uh, because I just find him a, a really interesting person. He's up on my wall up there. 
a few more bits and pieces um some i've got a couple of books here about shakespeare and i've got so many uh, books i've got all the plays downstairs of course i've got all the, the um copies of the plays that my father had uh, throughout his career some that i had uh, when i was acting but you know i didn't want to make this go on and on and on so a couple of books about Shakespeare and a really nice one is, is this by Bill Bryson. Uh, Bill Bryson is a great writer of all kinds of things. He is such a readable writer. This is one of many, many uh, biographies of Shakespeare. It's amazing how many biographies there are of Shakespeare considering there are so many gaps in his history that we don't know about. Uh, but this is, is great. And let me just read some of this. Uh, in a journey through the streets of Shakespeare's time, he brings to life the hubbub of Elizabethan England and a host of characters along the way. Bryson celebrates the glory of Shakespeare's language, his ceaseless inventiveness, gave us hundreds of now indispensable phrases, images and words and delights and details of his fallouts and folios, poetry and plays. <laughs> the Financial Times has a warm and funny guide through the whole complicated morass of Shakespearean scholarship. Uh, yeah, it's great. And that is so true, you know, about uh, the word we use. There are so many words and phrases we use today that Shakespeare invented. We are quoting Shakespeare all the time without knowing it. Um, just to go through a few words and phrases that Shakespeare basically invented. So gossip, obscene, rant. Those are just very few of the words, but the phrases... I've not slept one wink, cruel to be kind, in my heart of hearts, my own flesh and blood, he has eaten me out of the house and home, it's Greek to me, jealousy is a green-eyed monster, something wicked this way comes, foregone conclusion, wear my heart upon my sleeve, all that glitters is not gold, the world is my oyster, Wild goose chase, breaking the ice, <laughs> brave new world, etc, etc. Gosh, there are so many words and phrases Shakespeare invented. People who dislike Shakespeare are actually quoting him all the time, which I find quite fun. Uh, another biography of William Shakespeare that I have really enjoyed is The Life and Times of William Shakespeare by Peter Levi. And this goes very much into not just his life, but also the circumstances surrounding each play. He looks a lot at um, the plays, how they were inspired, and lots of quotes from them, etc. So uh, I've really been enjoying that. And of course, there are many, many other good biographies of Shakespeare. And do please mention them if in the comments if there are some that you particularly like um just to end this this is quite an interesting book that i think my my brother gave to my father on one of his opening nights it's called players of shakespeare it's there's two uh so it's a second in the series and it's a compilation of actors talking about some of the roles that they've played and it was published in 1988. So a lot of these actors were not famous at the time, but they are now. And I have to say that quite a few of the names um, here, my father actually worked with and I knew too. Roger Allen, Kenneth Branagh, uh, Ben Kingsley, uh, Alan Rickman. And uh, there's a lovely photo there of Alan Rickman in his early days uh, playing Jayquies in As You Like It. Uh, Anthony Sher, Juliet Stevenson, David Suchet, lovely man David, uh, Zoe Wanamaker. I'm not going to tell you who I know from that list. <laughs> but this is a fascinating uh, book. So 
to look back on some of these now very very well known names and and see them talking about roles they played early on in their careers uh, if you find anything like that that's really fascinating so that's it that is my celebration of shakespeare i hope you've enjoyed it and uh, please do write any comments any other books you know that involve shakespeare about shakespeare and um, what you feel about Shakespeare. Um, I know that uh, sometimes people don't understand Shakespeare and often it, people don't get Shakespeare because it hasn't been taught very well in schools. If you are one of those people, I seriously recommend going to see uh, a play by a good company uh, that does Shakespeare well or see one of the many brilliant films and do subscribe if you haven't already uh, because it really really does help my channel and I really want to uh, keep it going and growing and there we are so happy birthday Will Shakespeare on your 460th birthday let's all have a drink to Will on the 23rd which is next Tuesday. So, hope you enjoyed that. Cheers for now, and I will see you very soon. Yes, Tilly will see you soon as well. Bye for now.